Hey everybody, this is Doug with another short video for my fellow device patients. And this video is also for potential device patients because I'm going to be talking about a tool that might lead to you getting a pacemaker or a defibrillator. Today I'm going to be talking about insertable loop recorders. And here is an example of one. This is one manufactured by Medtronic. It's called a Medtronic uh, Link, Reveal Link. And it is a diagnostic tool that they insert into your body. They don't even call it an implant because it's more of an injection than an implantation. So they insert it into your body. It sits here uh, up to three years. And all it does, it doesn't deliver any therapy. So it doesn't uh, pace your heart like a pacemaker. It doesn't shock your heart like an ICD. All it does is watches your heart and records uh, your EKG, it records your heart rhythm over and over again. And it records at certain times. So this is a tool that you might get somewhere in the progression while you're trying to figure out what kind of cardiac issue you're having. If you're having episodes of fainting or lightheadedness or maybe your heart is racing and you don't know why and the doctors are trying to figure out what's going on with your body, they may do a number of things that will someday lead to a, a product like Link. Um, they might uh, have you do a stress test. They might have you do a tilt table test. Uh, you might get a Holter monitor to wear for uh, three or seven or 10 or 30 days. They might have you wear a wearable uh, heart monitor, something like a Zio patch or a Seek, which is also manufactured by Medtronic. Uh, they may do a number of different things trying to figure out, trying to capture that rhythm that you're having that would explain what's going on, why you're feeling lightheaded, why you're passing out, why you feel your heart racing. Uh, if none of those are successful, then an insertable loop recorder is probably a great option for you. And that's what happened with me, is uh, that I had an insertable loop recorder. I'm going to be talking mostly about the Medtronic link for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is because this is the one that I had, and this is the one that led to uh, my getting a, an ICD in my body because uh, it captured a rhythm that was a little concerning. Uh, but also because I used to work at Medtronic, and I worked with the link team on a couple of different projects, so I have a little connection that way as well. Uh, but I'm going to tell you about uh, about the device, how it works. I'll show you how it's implanted. Um, that's kind of cool. And then how you use it after uh, you have the device inside you. So first of all, let me tell you how this works. As I mentioned before, all it does is watches your heart rhythm and records. And it records in a loop. Uh, it, it, it constantly is recording and it is constantly recording over what it had just previously recorded until either you tell it to record save something or it tells itself to save something. So the reveal link in particular has about 60 minutes of data, 60 minutes of time that it can save and it's split in two ways. Half of that is for automated recordings. That happens in a couple of different instances. Uh, one is if your heart pauses for three seconds, so there's no heartbeat for three seconds, it will record automatically. If the heart rate drops below 30 beats a minute, it will record automatically. If your heart rate drops below, uh, well, that's kind of a, a algorithm, 230 beats a minute minus your age for 16 beats. So I was 40 when I got the device, which means it was looking for 16 beats at 190 beats a minute. If it had seen that, it would have recorded automatically. And any heart rate above 231 beats a minute, this will record automatically. Um, now there's also another subset of patients that would get a link. These are stroke patients. Uh, they're at a higher risk of another stroke and that's usually a result of atrial fibrillation. So this device is used to detect atrial fibrillation in stroke patients. And there's a whole algorithm set around uh, what atrial fibrillation looks like because it's very hard to detect. And so this has, a, has an algorithm in it to detect that and, and record. What it will record automatically is uh, about 30 seconds of the event as it starts. So once it hits one of those detection ranges, it will freeze the previous 30 seconds and save that. Then it will um, record how long the event lasted. So let's say your heart pauses for 20 seconds. It will record the previous 30 seconds. It will record that it took 20 seconds to resolve. And then it will record about 30 seconds of uh, how it resolved itself, what it looked like at the end. So they're gonna see how your heart rhythm uh, problem started, how long it lasted, and how it ended. And hopefully with that information, they can uh, determine which device you need or which therapy you need. Maybe it could be medication as well. Now, the other way that the loop recorder can record is when the patient activates it themselves. 
And that is done with this little tool. This is a patient activator. It has a little button on here. Uh, it has a loop that you can put around your keys or you can hang it on a lanyard around your neck. I used to put it in my pocket uh, with my cell phone because it's so small. Uh, but what you do is when you have symptoms of some kind, so you're feeling lightheaded, or you feel your heart racing, and this is what you're trying to capture. Uh, this is the heart condition, this is the heart issue that you're trying to capture that will help your doctor determine what's going on. You, hit, you use this little patient activator. Now when you hit the button, uh, a little light will pop up over here saying that it's active and it's looking. And when you place it over the device, it will beep telling you that it has found the device and it has told it to save. And then this light over here, this bright light will come up and it will light up. Now I'm gonna do this and show you, uh, but I'm also gonna be quiet because this is gonna beep and I want you to hear what that sounds like. So there's the light that comes on. And when you put it over the device, there we go, it does that beep beep. And then the bright light comes on telling you that it has recorded. Uh, now how Once much? you click the patient activator to save an event, it will save that information on your link device. Uh, now you, the, the amount of time that you can save is based on how your clinic sets up your device. So you can save anywhere between seven and a half minute segments to 15 minute segments. And that will determine how many times you can push this button before you need to send data through your CareLink monitor. Uh, mine was set up for seven and a half minute segments, which means I could save four, uh, four different events with this uh, activator. You can either save two, three, or four events. Once you hit your maximum, you have to download your data through your CareLink monitor to your clinic, or you're going to start erasing older events. I was able to save four events. If I had tried to click my uh, activator a fifth time, before sending data, I would have recorded over the first event. I can only send up to four different transmissions or four different saved events on, on my link device. So I would have to send after I reach my maximum. So it's a good idea to ask your clinic how many events you are able to save before you need to send data. Now, once you send that data, it's saved. The clinic has it. They can look back at those records at any time. You can go ahead and, and click your activator uh, the maximum number of times that you can. Now, uh, mine was set up for seven and a half minutes, but um, I have a copy of what it captured, and this is the important part. And this is a total of 30 seconds right here of my recording. But you can see you've got a normal heart rhythm for the first 10 seconds here. And then I had this crazy stuff, and I was uh, on the verge of passing out right about there, just about maybe four seconds in. So I felt like I was gonna pass out. I clicked my patient activator and this is what it captured and this is what I needed to show that I was having an issue that eventually led to my getting uh, an implanted defibrillator. All right, let me show you how these are inserted because it's kind of cool. Uh, this is the tool that they use. The, the link comes preloaded on this and it will end up right here in, uh, right here in the pectoral region and it's very simple. From start to finish, the entire procedure lasts maybe five minutes. First, they'll deaden the skin, usually using a little um, lidocaine, so they numb it. Make a small incision, just about the width of a scalpel. They really just po poke a hole. That's what they do. And let's say this is my skin here. They insert the tool into the hole and then turn it over. Keep it really flat to the skin and then they just inject it like this. Just like that. And there it is under your skin right there. Of course, they do a much better job than I did. Uh, but like I said, it takes from, from start to finish maybe four or five minutes. It's a procedure that used to be done in the um, uh, EP labs or ORs. So you had to go into a surgical suite to do it. But starting in uh, January of 2019, there will be reimbursement to do these in doctor's offices, uh, which is totally reasonable. Uh, so this could be done in your, your doctor's office in, uh, in the near future. Now, once it's inside you, it will start recording your heart rate and uh, your heart rhythm. And if it detects anything, it will record automatically. Or if you use the patient activator, it will, will record those, uh, that period of time. It will save it. And then it will transmit every night to your doctor's office. Now, whether or not anything happens, 
it will transmit every night. And it will send certain data points that your physician can look at and, and determine if there's an issue or a problem. But if something is recorded, it will send a little flag as well saying the device recorded something. The clinic should then contact you and have you send a full download. Now this is where you have to take the, um, you know, you have the bedside monitor, the CareLink monitor. You have to take that little head off, you put it over the device, it downloads the data, you put that back on the CareLink monitor and then it will transmit everything. It doesn't send everything automatically. You have to manually transmit the entire data so that they can get the, you know, to get the strip like this that I got. Uh, but um, they will get notified when something is detected and recorded, either by you manually doing it or by the device automatically doing it. And, uh, and then they'll contact you and have you send a full download. Um, otherwise, you just go about your normal life. Uh, there's really nothing to worry about with these. It shouldn't be painful. It should just sit under the skin and uh, it'll record your heart rate and hopefully detect exactly the problem that you were looking for, just like it did for mine. Well, I think that's all I have for you. So I hope that information was helpful. Uh, for those of you who have a device, uh, I hope that it's gonna be working out for you, that you find the issue you are looking for. And for those who are still searching, the uh, insertable loop recorders may be an option for you that you can talk to your doctors about. So thanks for watching the video and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks.